If you use Power Automate a lot like me and you're often consuming different connections to different services to get data, that's great until you want to step beyond the boundaries of Microsoft 365. When you want to do that, you're going to interact with APIs from other services. Most often, you're then going to incur a cost for a premium connector in Power Automate for you to go and get data from that API. In this video, I'm going to show you a technique that one of our Academy members shared where you can avoid that cost and still get the data back from your API. Now I figure it's probably easier if I show you the flow running and then I'll talk you through building one for yourself. This flow just gets called from a Power App. It's a very small flow that retrieves address information based upon two parameters, a longitude and a latitude that are passed in to the Power App. What you would typically then do, and I've done this in the past, is you would call out to the Bing connector and that will get free address information back from the Bing service. That's being retired. So in other videos, I've explored how to go and use other services that offer free services just like Bing. But the problem there is that what you have to do is use what's called an HTTP action to go and call that API to get that information back. What you're seeing on screen is a different kind of action that in a slightly different way still retrieves that same information and presents it to you. And with a little bit of extra work, you can use it in the same manner in your Power App. For example, you can apply this to any API you can call in the manner I'm about to show you. Let me just test it and then I can show you what's going on. So it's asking me for a longitude and a latitude. I'm going to make some numbers up here. That minus may be problematic, but we can deal with that if we decide this is the solution we want. Run the flow. So I've just put in some longitude and latitude information and I've used this action here. It's then effectively, and I'll talk you through this in a moment, it's gone off to the API using this action and created me a file. And that file here, I'm going to go and get the contents of. And I have to do a little bit of decoding because of the way the file is formatted. But I'm then able to respond to the flow. Let's just have a look at what's been given back. Okay, so I can see that what I'm actually getting back, because my minus wasn't interpreted properly, is an address in the Indian Ocean. But I can see that this has gone out to a URL that I provided to it, and I'll show you what that URL is in a moment, and got information. None of that is premium connectors. So let me show you how that actually works. So let's flip over to a flow here. I'll manually trigger this one to show you what happens. I've initialized two variables. A longitude has got a value in it, it's just a string. Latitude, again, has got a different value and it's just a string. What you want to then do is reach for the OneDrive for Business connectors. You'll see them grouped here. Click See More. And the one you're looking for is down the bottom at the moment called Upload File from URL. What you then need to do is to provide the URL of the API that you're calling. It'll be in a specific structure as outlined by your developer documentation for that API. There are lots of APIs that you can use this method with, so I encourage you to go and experiment. You can even experiment with paid services that provide an API interface for you to use. The example I'm going to pop in is the one that was provided by our Academy member, and it's ArcGIS. They've got a REST service which allows you to do a reverse lookup using longitude and latitude. And you can see here, what I'll do is I'll just delete these, it requires a couple of parameters. We want location first of all, so let's take the um, longitude and then after that it wants the latitude. So longitude and latitude, sorry, other way around. I've then given a third parameter which is, the, um, which is JSON. Then what we need to do is we need to decide where we want the file to be placed. So I'm going to place it into my documents library and I'm just going to give this one a file name that's address Dot JSON because I just happen to know through the developer documentation that it's JSON information that will come back. We want it to overwrite in this case because I don't want to keep adding new files called address JSON to that folder. That'll just get busy. The next thing you need to do, so all that's going to do is go and retrieve the information, pop the data into OneDrive for you. Again, reach into the OneDrive for Business action group and get file content using path. All you need to do is use dynamic content there to choose the path to the file you've just created. Leave everything else set as it is. One gotcha is you may find that the data comes back in a slightly odd format. 
Let me just test this and show you what I mean by that. So it's just showing that I need that permission. I've got those permissions and it's run. So we can see here, if we actually look at the parameters being sent off, we've sent off to that URL with the location and the two pieces of information. You can see there's a slight issue with my minuses. I'll have to work that one out if I use this one. But what we get back is this. So you'll notice here the body that's come back has a content type of octet stream. What that's telling us is the data here that sits in this particular element of the body is valid, but it's in a compressed format. It's effectively been coded by the platform. So what we have to do is we have to unpack that information. And there's a, an expression in Power Automate we can use. Helpfully, the name doesn't quite correlate, but you'll get used to this. We'll create Compose and we'll do an expression. And the expression you're looking for is base 64 to string. All that's going to do is unpack all the information that is in that particular action into the right format so it's it's human readable. What you need to do is point it at the output from that get file content. So there we go. But specifically, we want to point at an element of that output. And I don't know if you remembered, I just showed you that. It's the dollar content, the actual information in that file stream. Pop that into single quotes just so it understands it correctly and click add. Now if we rerun that, we'll see a human readable address. Okay, let's have a look. And there's our output from those particular locations in a readable format. Now you can substitute this URL for any URL that you feel you want to try to get information from a third party service, even if you need to pass in parameters. Give it a go, have a, have a try with it. I'd love to hear how you get on. I'll put a few examples of other free URLs that you could experiment with into the comments of this video. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope it's a useful tip and do like and subscribe. Keep coming back to watch new ones.